Good morning, folks. We've got a number of sun science articles today, a bit of cosmology, climate, and a blast from the past. The sun has thankfully been a bit quieter the last two days as we come to spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star. Bright active regions calmed considerably, and on the north, the dark patch is the next incoming coronal hole, facing Earth tonight into tomorrow. Folks, we didn't have any large quakes the last day, but the shaking continues in Nevada. One hopes it's an aftershock sequence from the five-pointer the day before, and not four shocks of something else. A quick FYI on sunspot maximum. In the wake of CMEs, there is more to come. It can be relatively smooth and quiet for days, and then in the wake of the CME, little bits of plasma and non-homogeneous stream outs occur. These tend to have variable phi angles as well, and make for a much more complicated solar wind picture in sunspot maximum. Up next, apparently all it takes to make it into the American Astronomical Society journals these days is to prove that sunspots are correlated with eruptive activity on the sun. You think? One of the things SOHO has been monitoring for 25 years are those CMEs. It's seen more than 30,000 of them in its third cycle now of operation. Here are some of the best processed images from the satellite. While its UV zoom is a step behind the more recent SDO, it's a half step, and SDO doesn't have the coronagraphs like SOHO does. It is indeed still going strong here a quarter century after starting its mission, and given that it's still the best Earth-directed coronagraph, we need it to keep hustling a bit longer. When it comes to eruptions on other stars, scientists are getting much, much better at seeing them sort of. They noticed a number of flares, but not many CMEs, and had to conclude that the optical identification of those events is still too difficult for the most part. It is just a simple fact that when a star pumps out something other than a big supernova, the ejection can be extremely hard to notice. Stellar eruptions at Proxima Centauri recently caused a rethink for its close-in planet B's habitability, but not for planet C which is further away at 1.4 AU from Proxima Centauri, and is apparently six times the size of Earth. Not such a friendly gravitational environment for humans, but its solar wind exposure, they say, is actually expected to be about the same as Earth. When it comes to gamma ray exposure in the galaxies, the binaries are the providers of the mysteries. It's not hard to get gamma from a nova or merger or cosmic jet launching, but here they're discovering a new way powerful magnetic star causing such an excited and interactive bow shock towards its partner that the shock itself is the source of the gamma rays as their particles interact. Moving a bit further out, we find that, uh-oh, the cosmic microwave background may have even more problems and tweaks than Dr. Robitaille realized. Here we find their best explanation, beginning to try to break rules of physics. And at the cosmological scale, those sure are difficult to understand. The move towards normal matter halos of galaxies starts with the identification and characterization of the circumgalactic medium. Here, toss out the number one explanation for the cool gas, leave it inside the galaxy, use the cosmic web feeding to explain the surrounding gas, and you work your way towards a normal matter paradigm, not dark matter. And veteran observers, how about some trivia? Based on some of the critical nova dust and gas science we've seen this year, why should they have already known that the material outside of the galaxy was not from supernova events within? Your hint? Pinballs. Moving on to Greenland, where we've had to watch scientists jump back and forth and side to side, trying to forecast and analyze the melt in Greenland. I gotta admit, it's hard not to laugh at the scary point of no return being 600 years away, at a minimum, and that would require the scariest of the climate-forcing scenarios which we have literally spent all year showing are complete garbage and which are indeed already being revised back downward due to those studies this year. Last but not least, what are the chances of finding one of the greatest rock art sequences in the history of Earth, never before seen, hidden in a remote forest of the Amazon, so high up the rocks the scientists needed drones to see some of them and still have no idea how the people got up there or held on to paint those structures, and for the surrounding region to be so empty, but for these carvings and paintings at the time of the Younger Dryas, over 12,000 years ago, the same time ancient Bolivian strongholds were abandoned, the last time the world turned over into a new age. Folks, the mystery deepens. We greatly appreciate all your support. Folks, learn more about these ages of Earth punctuated by catastrophe. Learn about cosmology trends or the climate struggles being worked through. 
all with the free videos on the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. It is your one-stop catch-up resource. Members of the website, we are up over 500 hours of content when you join. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe as well because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.